Okay, welcome to video number four in this series of creating a platformer game with P5JS JavaScript graphics and animation library. I'm Paul Baumgarten, computer science teacher. I'm your host today. Let's get cracking. Today I thought we would get our sprites loaded. So last video we've got a white circle on pink background moving about the screen. We can control it with the mouse. Or, or the keyboard. Let's replace this circle with some of the art that you have created with your sprite sheets and replace the pink background with whatever background art you have got as well. So if I come to my VS code and remember all of your artwork is sitting inside an assets folder here. Let's see how we can get that going, shall we? So this, I mentioned before that we were going to create another function called preload. Uh, that was a video or two ago. So we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to insert that um, before my setup. And this is just so that things are logically consistent in my own mind, because the preload runs first and then the setup function and then the draw keeps on running continually. So the function is just called preload. Uh, another couple little tip for using VS Code. If I kind of hover here on the side between the line numbers and my typing area, you can see these little arrows appear. You can click on those to kind of close things that you're not wanting to distract you or have in the way at the moment. And then you click on them again to reopen them. All right. So that can kind of tidy things up on your screen. And so you can just focus on the code that you're trying to work on. So I'm going to load up a couple of different bits and pieces right now. So that I'm going to start with my character, my sprite work for my player. So I'm going to call this P underscore. So all of my player stuff, I'm going to use P underscore, just P for player. Uh, and so let's, the still animation. So when my player is just facing the front, uh, and the function to load that is called load image, capital I on the word image, and then a set of parentheses. And this, we, we require a value inside here, uh, inside a set of quotes. The way that variables work in most programming languages is if you're wanting to assign a piece of text as the value of the variable, you put it inside quotes so that the programming language can easily tell where your the piece of text you're wanting it to remember starts and stops. All right, and so what I'm going to put inside this is the location of the file. All right, so I think I just want my little standing image. So if I click on it, all right. Uh, in case you didn't realize, you can click on your images here and they will appear. Uh, you'll get a preview window appear. So if I come down to player one standing, will it play my GIFs? Yeah, it does. Cool. Should we do, let's do player three. Um, so that's different to my demo. That I showed at the start. Uh, so, do, 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 player three front. Okay. So, this little pink alien person. Now, one nice thing about VS Code is I can just right click on this file name and come down to copy relative path and then go back to my JavaScript. And inside, in between the double quotes, if I right click and paste, it has put the name of where my file is. Now, an important little catch to be aware of you can see here that the 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 backslash and the p are a slightly different color this is because of the way that windows computers store file names um, and basically windows computers decided to mess everything up <laughs> older other operating systems so macs and linux and everything else use the other slash um, and so do, so do web browsers and everything else. And basically what you need to do is you need to change these slashes to um, uh, a slash in this direction and the little error will go away. Because um, the backslash indica 
inside a string is a, has special meaning. It means that the next character is a special code instead. I'm not going to get into the technical complexities of it. Just for now, know that if you're doing this on a Windows computer and you had that slash, change it to that slash. Otherwise, things are not going to work uh, happily for you. Okay, so the player still image. Okay, I've got that loaded up. Uh, and what do I want for my background? Uh, there were some backgrounds up here. So we've got castle. Does that look like a castle? I guess it's gray walls. A desert, except it's blue. <laughs> uh, maybe I should edit some of these in Photoshop. Grasslands. Mushrooms. Should I use the mushroom? I'm, I'm going to quickly pause and I'm going to get Dali to create a background for me. Let's unpause. Let's let's, let's quickly do this. Um, create a background illustration for use in a platformer computer game inspired by the skyline of the city of Hong. Oh, come on, type. Hong Kong. Let's see what this comes up with. Do, 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 do. And this is maybe where I should pause. <laughs> All right. What do, uh, yeah, but... I, Oh, I want it to be, I don't want the th the depth, it has to be flat facing, um, how many times am I going to hit refresh and use, use up video play time? <laughs> it's not what I want, because I want it to be, it needs to be 2D flat. Um, how do I change, what do I want to type on the prompt? Mm, I don't want the depth to it. That'll do. That'll do nicely. Okay, let's save that into my video folder, into my assets folder, and let's call that BG Hong Kong. All right, and that's a PNG file, so yeah, I'll just save that and put a .png on it. Okay. <laughs> so now, there we go, BG for background Hong Kong fantastic let's use that so uh, I'm going to just call, call that background and I'm going to load image and let's where was that file name do, 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 do. right click copy relative path paste change the slash put the semicolon on the end uh, and I'm going to close that sidebar okay um now so far this preload will load these images but they're not going to appear on screen yet so we need a way to be able to access p still and background uh, inside our draw function and so to do that we need to turn these into global variables so up the top here i'm just going to say let p still and let background and that's it. I'm not going to set them to any values. So when JavaScript first loads, they'll just be set to like empty space and an empty variable. And then the preload will fetch the PNG files and load them into the variables so that then down here in draw, we can use them. Okay, so how can we use them in draw? What do I need to change uh, for Let's get the background running first of all, shall we? Uh, so to do that, um, in, instead of this background, I'm going to comment that out. And I'm just going to say image, whoops, which should be all lowercase, image. Uh, what, uh, so if the editor is changing it on you like it is for me, I'm just going to hit control Z because I want the lowercase i, which is the image command in E5.js. I don't know why it was automatically changing it to uppercase i. Anyway, I want to draw the background and I want to place it so that the top left corner of my Im 
image goes out the top left corner of the screen. So at position zero, zero. Uh, and instead of drawing a circle, let's comment that out, we're gonna draw an image, which is our little sprite character. All right, and so that is image, open uh, round brackets, and that was P still. And where do I want that to appear? I want that to appear at the X and Y coordinates of my player. So player underscore X and player underscore Y. Now, this there's gonna be one little issue with this, but we'll come back to that in a second. Save, save, go back to the web browser and let's take a look at our progress. <laughs> Marvelous. Okay, so I've got my little player. Uh, it's moving, it's not animated yet. If this was an animated GIF, I think it should just automatically work actually. Um, but notice that the background doesn't really fill up the screen. Um, if I refresh, yeah. Um, I want my background to be resized to fit my screen. So let's sort that out. I need to resize it. Uh, and so what's the what's the best way of doing this? Um, I need to know the width of the image. So let's actually just inspect it. Um, let's look it up in, oh, I know, let's use, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's look it up in here. So if I open up this Hong Kong image, uh, okay, down the bottom here, you can see here 1024 by 1024. So that's the size of this image in pixels. Okay, so now that I know that, I can work out some math to resize it to whatever I want. So I only want to resize it once. I don't want to resize it 15 times a second. So I'm not going to do the resize command in draw. I'm going to do the resize command here in in uh, my setup. All right, so once preload is, the only thing we're going to keep in preload is loading the files. Everything else that we want to happen before the game starts, we'll put inside setup. So inside here, I'm going to run background dot resize and then I can just give it the new height and the width command uh, values sorry that I want so I'm gonna um, I mean I can just give it window width and window height but it will kind of it'll skew the shape oops skew the shape of the image it's, it'll stretch it I mean for now that's probably fine yeah all right I'll keep it for now um, this is it's a very bright image so I might edit it in Photoshop and just kind of make it more subtle um, but yeah we'll worry about that later anyway so now I've got some Im images loaded so I haven't changed anything else with the code the keyboard works the same the mouse works the same, um, but now we're using our artwork. Uh, we've loaded up a couple of images. We're resizing the background, and we're using, we're drawing the images on screen instead of using the background command or the circle command. All right. So at this point, we're going to need to. We're going to create load image a whole bunch of times for all of the different sprites that you're wanting to use. Uh, so the um, animation for moving left, the animation for moving right, the animation for jumping, all of that kind of s stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. So make sure you've got those working because we will be using these kinds of commands moving forward. Okay. Uh, I will see you on the next video.